Itmar has today joined the army, and from a garrison theater somewhere in England, we say once more, it's that man again. Despite his meandering maneuverability, his strategical susceptibility, his infantile indefatigability, and his tendency towards tactical trepidity, he still remains. Mr. Randley, Mr. Randley! Colonel Handley's just taking a course in camouflage and can't be seen. Colonel Handley? What's a blinky war coming to? That, sir, is a military secret and cannot at the moment uh, be divulged. Ooh! Arcadur! <laughs> Colonel Handley! Colonel Doolally! Lummy, what a lark! <laughs> oh, gee! I guess that guy's got something. Ever since much fiddling farm was taken over by the troops, everything's gone haywire. <laughs> Jesus, this will be the... This will be the... Boy. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. <laughs> now, boys. Gee, boss, you're still in civvies. Didn't you get your commission? Commission? I didn't even get any orders. <laughs> they couldn't think what shower to put me in. <laughs> shower, boss? Sure. They wanted, first of all, to put me in the FFI. <laughs> What? What's FFI, boss? Well, turn around and I'll tell you. <laughs> but what are you now, boss? Sam, it's a military secret. I don't know whether I'm a band area or a highly paid help. There's a guy to see you, boss. Oh, was he very polite, Sam? Sure, boss. Uh, did he have a friend with him who kept on saying, go on, you ask him? <laughs> yeah, boss. It'll be a red cap. <laughs> But he, he's too small for that, boss. Then he must be a kneecap. <laughs> well, I can't see him now, Sam. I'm expecting the M.O. at any moment. So go down to the quarter blokes and get me a pally ass. Okay, boss. I wonder how I'm going to get the army off my estate. I know, I'll make a noise like a cookhouse slinger. Here you are, boss. <laughs> what have you got there, Sam? A pally ass. <laughs> A friendly donkey. You needn't have said that, I know. <laughs> yeah. He's a simple chap, Sam. He thinks a sergeant major takes orders from the bombardier. And, boss, yes? there's a man outside in a long white coat and a hatchet in his hand. Ah, that'll be the M.O. Show him in, Sam. <laughs> Come on, son, let's have you. Let's have you. Fine medical officer you are. Don't you know what you should do before you come in here? No, mate, what should I do? You should cough. <laughs> Now, look here, cop. I've got to give it a once over, see? Hop on one leg. All right. Here is sinews hopped by Tommy Handley. <laughs> All right, well, in response to your encore, I will present my famous ballet, Salute the Badger or See Me Dance the Polecat. <laughs> hey, half a mouth. I've got to listen to your chest first. Well, I've locked my chest and thrown away the key. <laughs> Say 99. 99. <laughs> Lovely, what's that? You've got the wrong program. That's Eddie Cantor. <laughs> You'd better have an X-ray, mate. X-ray? No fear. Last time I had an X-ray, they found a bugler playing lights out. Old liver come back to me. <laughs> well, what shall I put you down as? Oh, put me down as gently as possible. <laughs> what a marvellous M.O. The other day he came in, put a cigar in my mouth and lit his thermometer. Excuse, please, mister. Oh, lummy. <laughs> It's Pyramid Pete with the off-white feet. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, mister, you give me permission to pedal on your parade ground? No, no. <laughs> oh, no. You'll have to see Shagga Brown about that. <laughs> oh, then, mister, I sell you blackout chevron. Very stripy, oh, crappy. <laughs> well, thank you. You haven't got a nice hat. Not too fat. Oh, no, mister. I got what they wear. Very cocky. Nice and darky. Well, have you any historical pictures for the officers, mess? Like uh, Wellington at Paddington, or what's the matter with you? Oh, yes, mister. I got Lord Moore in army store. I got him. I go, I come back. You know... 
He's got a white tide mark round his neck. I'll make him a window cleaner in the glass house. Boss. What? Boss, something terrible's happened. Don't tell me you've seen a fatigue party working. <laughs> no, boss. What? Worse than that. You know your fish and chips that you left on the steps of the general's caravan? Don't say he's eaten them. No, boss. But the paper they were wrapped in has blown through the adjutant's window. Lummy. Well, we better get it back or I shall be charged with assault and vinegar. <laughs> Oh, Sam, too late. He signed it. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> now I'll be sent to Ensor for 14 days CP. What CP, boss? Concert party, if I <laughs> Ah, Mr. Anne Grenade. Oh. <laughs> with, uh, with all these soldiers, I'm completely demobilized. Duh. Don't be so silly, so so. You mean demoralized. Yes, but I've been called up. They want me to join the Royal Fusiliers. <laughs> you mean the Royal Ginger Beers? Yes, they want to make of me a sipper. A sipper? Is that a sapper at supper? <laughs> yes, yes, a sopa. I see. So if a sapper sips his supper, that makes him a super supper upper. <laughs> Have you had your medical? Oh, yes, Mr. Ankle Jerk. <laughs> Alas, they said there was a physical rock. <laughs> What, peppermint or Gibraltar? They examined me with a telescope. Oh, well, that was to see if your name went all the way through. <laughs> no, no, no. They said I'd wait around the knee. Oh, well, that's better than having jankers on the weekend. <laughs> I, I wanted to get a job on the stiff. On the stiff? <laughs> Doing what? Starching the quartermaster to keep him straight. <laughs> And now they want to put me in the canteen in the niffy. <laughs> well, that's better than being a tin can in the liffy. Well, so, so I'll talk to the general about you. Mr. Randall Tank, as the French would say, au revoir. And as the Russians now say, oh, Dessa. <laughs> well. Well. Hello? All right, Jack White. Yes, but I want you to do Tessie Horabotos. Certainly, certainly, Jack White. Yes, but you don't do Tessie Horabotos. Okay, Jack White. Who's that, boss? Sam Brown. <laughs> well, why? Why'd you call him Jack White? I'm colorblind. <laughs> well, if I'm going on night exercises, I'd better put on my pajamas and have friend tattooed on my chest with luminous paint. <laughs> Hello, who's this coming out of the cow shed? She's in uniform, too. Good heavens, it's Poppy Poopa. She mustn't recognize me. Now, what can I use as a mustache? What about me? Oh, that's an idea. Thanks very much, puss. I'll put your tail on me upper lip and she'll think I'm a staff officer. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are, squire. I beg your pardon? Meow. Shut up, you. <laughs> I'm Brigadier Brandyballs. <laughs> Stand at attention when you speak to me, girl. Oh, take off that cat. I know you. Meow. All right, cat, send the bill in to Tom. <laughs> Have you been avoiding me lately, Squire? Well, uh, military duties, you know. I've been making invisible fags for acts to smoke in the street. <laughs> but you're not an officer. Shh, don't let the men know they think I am. You can't tell me anything about the army. I come of an old military family. Ever heard of the Poopas of Pondicherry? No, but I know a few pars who are fond of Sherry. <laughs> By the way, didn't you, uh, didn't they use your father's nose for a torch in the black hole of Calcutta? Oh, how dare you! I'm a terrible kid, I'm sorry. But, uh, I'm of an old military stock, too. Really? Yes, my great-grandfather on my mother's side was General Giblet, who fought at Grimey in 1844. <laughs> he married the daughter of Colonel Moore, who opened the early door of the Commodore Cornwall in 1894. <laughs> Did he have any children? Children? What, Colonel Moore? Oh, he had four. There was no more, any more, carry more, and forever more. I don't believe a word of it. Neither do I. <laughs> now, don't worry, Poppy. I've got to go and sharpen the Colonel's sword because he wants to cut a cheesecake at his daughter's wedding. <laughs> so go and get yourself a nice cup of khaki water and a buff bath bun. But when are we going to be married? When the wife gets a separation allowance. <laughs> You haven't got a wife. I know, but I must put something in my pay book. I couldn't take all the money myself. <laughs> I take it 
take a poor view of you, Itma. I'd like to take a good view of you, too. <laughs> a view of you, too? Certainly. Smile, please. Watch the birdies. <laughs> Thank you. Well, now you've done it. Now you will have our pictures all over River Valley now. How are you going to get out of that, Itma? Oh, easy. I shall say the pictures of Edgar Itma and his doll, Charlie McCoopa. Hey, boss. Yes? Boss, news has just come through. We're going on night exercises this weekend. Oh, that's good, Sam. We'll get overtime money. <laughs> well, now, you uh, you better black out the white carrier pigeons and uh, go down go down to the stores and get me some screw-retaining, pin-retaining, bolt-retaining, nout-remaining, self-propelling, fog-repelling, punctuating, insulating, actuating nuts. <laughs> What, uh, what for, boss? I'm going to feed the, to the zoo to feed the monkeys. <laughs> well, for cookhouse door. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm the one to run an army. I'll change my name to Carlo, then everyone can call me Monty. <laughs> Mr. Randley, Mr. Randley, Mr. Randley! Yes, 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 yes. Private Jones, 6485, stroke 79341 is on, 48 hours leaving Surrey. He's walking down the lane with a wep on one arm and a wren on the other. What's he got on his head? A nap. A sign. <laughs> this is no way to conduct a war. I think I'd better interview my staff. Can I do you now, sir? <laughs> Here she is, Mrs. Mott, the private enterprise. Oh, I love them, sir. Whether they're swatties or old sweat. <laughs> I know you do, you old camp follower. <laughs> if you're not swinging the leg, you're presenting arms. I'm an old cantina, sir. Yeah, I've seen you blowing up the sausages with the bellows. <laughs> Well, how are you getting on with your sergeant major, Mrs. M? Oh, he's as saucy as ever, sir. Oh? Why, only yesterday. He wanted to see me work ticket. <laughs> I see. Then he expected you to pass out, eh? <laughs> I repelled his invasion exercises. Oh? I... What did you do? Take off your gas mask? <laughs> I've, uh... I've got another follower now, sir. He's a gunner. Oh, is he? <laughs> I bet you make him come out of his shell. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. He says I'm a wicked little barrage. <laughs> <laughs> then I suppose he sets fire to your tippet and does a pincer movement behind the smoke screen. <laughs> well, I wonder the Major hasn't made you his Batwoman. Batwoman, sir? I've always been a good woman. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, you know, take the place of his Batman, manservant, look after him, fold his sleeping bag. No fear, sir. I believe in letting sleeping bags lie. <laughs> You're right. You're quite right. You never know what you'll find in them. But uh, surely you could polish his accoutrements. I'd like to see him ask me, sir. I'd go straight up to him and I'd... Quite, 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 quite. quite. <laughs> well, I hope you won't neglect me with all these other attractions about. Oh, no, sir. Oh. I've brought this for you. Oh, isn't that nice? What is it? It's a bombardier's blowout, sir. <laughs> well, looks more like one of Mum Barton's fish balls full of flack. TTFN. Kai ATM. What's that, sir? Kit inspection tomorrow. <laughs> well, you know, I'll have to put it in charge of army comforts. They'll never take her in the ATS while she uses barbed wire to keep up a khaki issue. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are, dummy wummy. Oh, hello, Aunt Sally. Well, they haven't knocked the clay pipe out of your mouth yet. <laughs> Have you been entertaining the troops? No, oh, yes, the dear boys. We've had such a lovely romp in the canteen. Oh, really? What did you play? Strip Ludo or Kiss in the Cookout? <laughs> No, I, I have recited Shakespeare to them. Shakespeare? What did you give them? Much ado about Nappy. <laughs> or the taming of the stew. They closed their eyes in ecstasy and blew loud kisses at me. <laughs> they do that to me sometimes. <laughs> but I prefer strawberries. And then, to the more agile ones, I taught the maypole dance. You old rascal. Next thing you'll be turning a cartwheel in the sergeant's mess. <laughs> One dear boy was so amusing. He said he was a titterbug. Titterbug? <laughs> what did he do? Run up the wall and laugh? 
Well, uh, did they dance long, Auntie? Oh, no. No, they had to go out for what they called their wallows. Oh, I see. <laughs> Yes, uh, I, I think it's a kind of cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like it sometimes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I knew the time. Uh, apparently their favourite game is one I don't know. Uh, they call it square bashing. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, is it new? Well, not to me. I mean, uh, well, they've been at it for years, these fellows. <laughs> Tell me, how are you getting on with Mrs. Mop, Auntie? Oh, she's perfectly blithered. Oh. Yes, she's promised me a little present next time I go into her kitchen. Well, I should make her taste it first. She saw arsenic and old lace last night. <laughs> what was it? She's promised to give me a fourpenny one. Oh. <laughs> I'd keep away if I were you. I've just seen her dipping a rolling pin in custard. <laughs> Well, I must fly, Tommy Wommy. I keep on promising to give a lecture to the dear commando. Oh, and what do they keep on saying? They've had it. <laughs> well, get off now, as your bucket woman says. What's that? Bucket woman? Oh, dear, Mrs. Mop. Uh, have you brought me my fourpenny one? Yes, I have, and for two pins, I... Quite, 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 quite. All right, all right. <laughs> I'll see you later, Auntie. I'm just going to take Mrs. Mop's blood pressure. <laughs> I'm glad she's gone, sir. There's something I want to get off my chest. Is it? Oh, I know. It's that anthracite necklace you've got on. <laughs> no, sir. It's something I've been longing to tell you. But I'll never get you on your own. Oh, go on. Tell me. Oh, I don't like to, sir. Oh, go on. Sing it to me. Well, I will if you play for me. All right, only don't breathe down the back of my neck. I wish that I could hide inside this letter. <laughs> And seal me up and send me out to you. What a surprise in store. They bring me to your door. I pop right out and kiss you like you'd never been kissed before. We'd be so happy we could cry together. <laughs> Then we'd stop the way we used to do. I wish that I could hide inside this letter and seal me up and send me out to you. Ooh. All clear's gone, anyway. <laughs> You've been listening to Postal Packing Mopper singing Lick Up Them Stamps. <laughs> well, now we must get on with the APCA discussion. They're sending a speaker down from London. I hope his label hasn't come off. Of course. Yes? Of course, the guy's here from Abcadabra. <laughs> from the Abcadabra? <laughs> you mean the APCA, Sam. The Army Bureau of Current Affairs. I like currents. I like affairs. <laughs> No, Sam, it's a sort of uh, discussion, you know. Are all the boys there? Sure, boys. Then i better go and face them. Yeah. Oh, sh Sam, Sam, he started. Oh, what at all? No, I'm, I'm the uh, fake me of uh, this here, the thing with Bob. I'm, uh, I'm coming down here. To, I'm, uh, that is, I, I'm... Make up a god here, ya! I said I'm here because... I'm here because... You're here because you're here! No, 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 no. No, so your, uh, your officers have been briefed for... Uh... Cut, Dad! Yes. Oh, I can't stand this. Uh, gentlemen. Two officers! Now, quiet, please. Now, the subject of this... Uh, this... Uh, how do you do? Uh, which will be led by our... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Major. What's your name? Yes. yes. That's your name. <laughs> no, my, uh, my name. Oh, yes, yes. yes that's easy. I'm, uh, I'm Major... Major... Major Trousers. Too long. <laughs> No, no, no. They, they, I, I, uh, Colonel, uh, Colonel, uh, she, she, oh, I'll forget me on rank in a minute. <laughs> Get on with it. But, but uh, what's the, uh, the, pretty, uh, the subject? Oh, that, yes, yes. Well, I was going to speak about, uh, the, the, the B, uh, B, uh, C? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, B, uh, bees. That's it, yes. How, how to keep, uh, bees. Bang them in the army! Yes. <laughs> the poor bees. Now, all the please. Now, as soon as uh, Major Fakematite has uh, addressed you on the uh, set of uh, as soon as... Uh, what was the thing of me again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right, yes. Oh, the, uh, what I was going to talk about, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes well, that's, uh, that's different. I, uh, I got in my... the, the, uh, the... Yesterday. 
You, uh, you were going to talk about uh, uh, fleas. Fle no, 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 no. Uh, uh, bees, oh, bees, bees, yes. Uh, I'm going to make it act, uh, act. Bea, bea. What? <laughs> You mean uh, you brought a, uh, you know, a thing that the bees live by? Uh, yes, you know, the high, the high... Uh... High, the high? Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 this is a, this scheme is a very big, big Ben. Yeah, that's right, yes. yes. Oh, now where is uh, this, uh, 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 big Ben? Oh, it's, it's just on, uh, just on... Uh... Nine o'clock? That's right. <laughs> You've been listening to Tommy Handley and Itmar with Horace Percival, Sidney Keith, Dorothy Summers, Dino Galvani, Bill Stevens, Jean Capra and Diana Morrison. The BBC Variety Orchestra conducted by Charles Shadwell, script by Ted Kavanagh, produced by Francis Wurzler. <laughs>